Be inspired. Sean was diagnosed with autism at 18 months. When it was discovered that he was also gluten and casein intolerant, he was placed on a biomedical diet. After trying a number of the mixes available, Grandma Debbie and her sister Kathy knew they could do better. Something just as healthy, but with improved taste and texture. Inspiration mixes are exactly that. And we'd like to share our delicious creations with you. We're sure you'll love them just as much as Sean does. Bon appetit. Hi, I'm Debbie with Inspiration Mixes, a gluten-free baking mix company. Today, we're gonna to show you how to make a wonderful, savory chicken pot pie using our pie crust. It makes two nine inch crusts and we're gonna be using one of those to make four chicken pot pies. So the first thing we wanna do is actually make our pie crust. Pour the bag of mix into a bowl and you wanna cut in your shortening. Sometimes I use half shortening. Sometimes I use the other half with butter. You can also use half shortening and half cream cheese. That just makes it nice and soft and just a little different flavor. So I put the 2 thirds cup of shortening into the pie crust mix and then I like to use a pastry blender. You can use a fork, but we wanna make those pea-sized pieces that when it cooks, it pops and makes that nice flaky crust. So I'm just simply using this pastry blender to blend it all in. Take a spoon, take a knife, make sure to get that shortening out of there. The trick to really flaky good pie crust is how that shortening or butter cream cheese pops when it's being cooked in the oven. So there, that's pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just need to look a little chunky. See that? how that sticks together a little bit. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is add our wet ingredients. I have one egg, a half a cup of very cold ice water. My grandmother used to put an ice cube in here because again, just like we want the butter or margarine or cream cheese cold and in little pea-sized pieces, that reaction to the heat in the oven makes it a nice flaky crust. I've also added a quarter teaspoon instead of a half teaspoon of vanilla because we're making a savory chicken pot pie and sometimes the vanilla will overpower the crust that you would want more for like an apple pie or a sweet pie. The other thing I've added is a half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, our magic ingredient in gluten-free baking. I've mixed that all together and now I'm just gonna add it And stir it until it's moistened. Now if you're vegan, of course you wouldn't add the egg, but you need to add two tablespoons of applesauce and a teaspoon of baking soda. That will give you your flakiness. It will be a little bit heavier crust, but it will still be nice and wonderful and flaky. Okay, that's it. Now we're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap. We wanna wrap it in there. We're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap for two hours. And two hours seems to be just a nice time frame to make it firm enough so when you roll it out, it's not all sticky. Even on wheat crusts, they recommend refrigerating the pie dough. Just simply wrap that up. Refrigerate it, and we'll be back in two hours to make that delicious, savory chicken pot pie. So now we're gonna make our filling for our chicken pot pie, and I've got a large skillet here, and I'm gonna to begin to melt butter 
four tablespoons of butter in the skillet. So I melted four tablespoons of butter in a skillet. I cut up a medium onion fine, two carrots diced fine, and two sticks of celery. You're going to cook that on medium for about 10 minutes until the onions turn translucent, almost clear. Okay, so now you see we've cooked the onions till they're translucent, and you can kind of see how clear they look. Let me pull one of those up for you so you can see it in the butter. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch. If you have any issues with corn, you can uh, transition to two tablespoons of arrowroot starch. It won't make it quite as thick, so you might need to experiment with it a little bit, but the cornstarch will. You'll need two cups of chicken stock. I make my own when I cook the chicken. I really like... Um, I like the dark meat, so I uh, cooked four thighs, but you'll need one pound of chicken. We just mix that two tablespoons of cornstarch into the two cups of, of chicken stock. Now I'm going to pour it in here to the skillet, and then we're going to cook it for about five minutes until it thins. That's going to make that nice creamy texture. That's in chicken pot pie. Once that thickens, then we'll be adding the chicken and the spices. Okay, so you can see how that has thickened. Does that look nice? The next thing we're going to do is add a half a cup of peas. Now these were frozen, but they will stir up nicely. Uh, my grandson is allergic to soy, and peas are in the soy family, so he's not able. When I make this for him, Sean does not get chicken pot pie with peas. One pound of chicken. I used four pieces of dark thighs meat, because we like the dark meat. Just stir that in. So now we're going to put in three quarters of a... Uh, teaspoon of garlic salt, and you can use pure gar garlic as well, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and then I buy a chicken Italian seasoning, and I put in te two teaspoons of that. It has all the ingredients together in our recipe. Easier, but you can also uh, follow the recipe that's on the back of the box that calls for half a teaspoon of chopped thyme leaves, two tablespoon of minced fresh parsley, three quarters of a teaspoon salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. So now as you can see, that is nice and thick. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in our cups. So now we're going to take a soup ladle and we're going to fill each one with all of the mixture. This makes four chicken pot pies. I've lined a baking sheet with a piece of aluminum foil because sometimes um, it'll bubble just a little bit, kind of like you're making a pie, and it'll spill over. This saves me some cleaning time. I've preheated the oven to 425. Okay, now we're gonna make our uh, pie crust that goes on top of our chicken pot pie. I do wanna mention that some people use ramkins and I use uh, custard dishes. They're bakeable and they're just as good. So now we're gonna go back to my wonderful pie crust. We're gonna put down tapioca flour. Remember that magic? We love tapioca flour. The pie crust makes two nine inch crusts. We'll only need one of those, so you can store the other one. You can either keep it in the refrigerator for a week, or you can put it in the freezer. So what I do, because we're doing four, is I actually cut this. I cut the dough in half, and then I cut it in half again. And just taking it, kind of squishing it a little bit, rolling it in our tapioca flour, 
and I'm going to roll this about an inch bigger than my custard cup. And see how nice that rolls out? It's just so wonderful. This pie crust is just so great and easy to handle. Now I'm just going to simply pick this up. And I'm going to put it on top. of my cup. I'm going to do the same thing to the other three and we'll be right back. So now I have laid um, a pie crust over the top of each of the custard cups and now you fold it down like so. Don't worry about it being too pretty. You just want to get that nice crust underneath there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a fork and just you do it like this. Take your fork and go around the edge so it secures it to the custard dish. Also makes it look kind of pretty. And the last thing I do is I take a egg wash. One egg with one tablespoon of cold water and I just brush it lightly over the top. Just, just gives it that nice kind of brown look that you see when you have bought a chicken pot pie in the store or served in a restaurant. One more thing before we cook it. This is going to bubble like I mentioned, so you'll want to take a knife and cut a slit in it. Just like you do when you're making a pie. It'll bubble out, and then I also recommend we cook these for 25 minutes at 425. I go in about 10 minutes into it because sometimes these will close up and you want to reopen them. Just simply take your little knife and go back through them, and there you have it. So now we're going to cook these. We're going to preheat the oven to 400 for 25 minutes. So I just pulled these out of the oven. Um, they were bubbling a little bit, and I also took a knife and kind of uh, sliced into the tops here again just to let the air escape. We're gonna let those cool for about 10 minutes, and then we're gonna eat them. Now we're going to eat our chicken pot pie. I pulled it out of the oven, I let it cool for about 10 minutes, and then what I recommend, I take a sharp knife and I loosen the sides. I dump it upside down. Ooh, scrape out that good stuff. I take a spatula and just turn it over because I like that look. Mm -mm. So now I've turned it over. I'm just going to cut it up. Let that steam come out. And look at that gluten-free chicken pot pie. Find us on www.inspirationmixes.com. Check out our store locations and you can also buy our mixes on amazon.com. From our home to your kitchen, bon appetit.